Hi, I'm Mark Clem, your host all season long for Meet the Members of the National Ski Patrol. Um, hey, we always tell, say that we're coming to a mountain near you, and we've met a whole bunch of fun, interesting people, um, and we're in western New York. Um, we're inside today. Uh, we, we were outside earlier today, but it's a uh, crisp minus four degrees, and the camera is malfunctioning. So we came into the patrol room, and we found a loyal viewer of the show. Hasn't missed an episode in two years. It's Kristen Russo here at Holiday Valley in western New York. And just to let you guys know, even though it's minus four on the outside, the snow is unbelievable. Just made eight or nine runs on the mountain, and it tell you what, it's to die for. And it's a bucket list, guys. If it's cold, you at least got to get eight or nine runs in. It's a bucket list mountain. You need to come on out here. Out here, it's a short drive from anywhere, or you can fly into Buffalo and get here in an hour. But the more important thing is, you got to get here. You just got to get the holiday value. That's kind of the way it is. Yeah. Isn't that right, Kristen? It, it is. Yes, absolutely. Now you came here 38 years ago. 22 years ago. 22 <laughs> years ago, and um, you forgot to leave. I did. Did you, like, lose your keys and haven't found your keys yet? Well, yeah, kind of. But um, this is, I've grown up here. Um, I started skiing here, actually, when I was 10. And um, when I became eligible to join the National Ski Patrol, I did. And I haven't left since. I love it here. It's a big family feel, um, whether you're a patroller or just even out on the mountain. There's a lot of regulars that we see, and we all know each other. So it's a great place to be. Now, we're here in the first aid clinic where um, you don't want to make a habit of being in here because even though we put Band-Aids on and the whole bit, um, we, uh, we'd we rather be out on the mountain skiing, right? And um, even though you have to come in, put a Band-Aid on, it's more fun on the outside. And just talk about the fun you've had in 22 years. And you've trained a lot of, um, and skied and trained with a lot of relatives, right? Yes. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough, my father was here for 40 years, and he was actually one of my s &T instructors. And then I happened to meet my husband here um, and trained him uh, about 12 years ago. So um, a lot of fun. I do a lot of training. Obviously, being out on the hill is the best part. Um, you get to train a lot of people. I do s &T training a lot. Um, meet a lot of great people from other areas as well. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of great fun. We get some really good snow here. We get the lake effect. So we have some good times out there. Now, you trained your husband. <laughs> Would he admit that? Probably not. <laughs> now, you know, we made a lot of ski patrollers who, who drive a, a distance and put the commitment in to come out here and put your skis on. But um, you take it at a different level. You're an instructor. Yeah. So you're not only out there having fun, you're teaching others and growing the patrol and growing the membership of the National Ski Patrol. So your kids and their kids will have a place to come and have a lot of fun in the winter. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we, we live about an hour away, but we are here all the time. We come down um, usually Fridays. We're here through Sunday, sometimes Mondays. Um, so this is kind of like a way of being, and we like to see new patrollers come up. Um, I love working with the new candidates. It's, it's a great feeling to see them start to progress and then also become instructors as well. Um, and to know that you had a little bit of a hand in that, it's, it's a really nice feeling. Now, did you feel like growing up, like, my dad did it, I got to do it, my kids are going to to do it is it just kind of it becomes a way of life a little bit and in your blood but did you feel that all the time or did he have to push you a little bit no I felt that all the time you know when we were younger my sister and I we used to follow my dad around so it was if he was doing S&T hey we're gonna jump into the class we'll be the riders in the toboggan we're gonna do the skills and do transitions and side slip um, so it was kind of something that I just wanted to always do um, my sister decided not to do the ski patrol route but she's a ski instructor out in Aspen so we both this was just a way of life we both got involved in some way now you know for all you ski instructors out there you know who the better skiers are. You have to admit it now. Come on, right? <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. We go through thick and thin. I think of us sometimes as, you know, the postmen, you know, we're, right. we're rain, right. snow, shine, you know, we're, we're the tough ones. 
Um, you have to be tough to weather the elements, especially today. Um, but patrollers are tough everywhere. Again, I always like to say that the ski patrollers are the real heroes of the mountain out there. They're the ones out there in the rain and the sleet. And when nobody else is skiing, they're getting the mountain open for that one person that might show up. If you're interested at all, and I'm pushing you guys every every episode, that, hey, if you're interested or have that passion and you want to be a member of the National Ski Patrol, hey, just pick up the phone. Give us a call. Um, if you can't find the patrol director because he's out having an unbelievable day or he's warming up drinking some hot chocolate because <laughs> he's fr half frostbitten, hey, just log on to www.nsp.org and Megan and Josh and Rachel and the folks out at the national office will gladly push you in the right direction. Instructing. How much more fun, um, Kristen, do you have instructing as you do actually out there skiing and patrolling and doing your everyday stuff? Um. I actually, I, I enjoy it. I love to teach. That's one of my passions. And um, I love being able to make a difference with other patrollers. So I really get a, a, a nice high out of just being able to help and take my talent and be able to pass it along to others. But there's a thrill of also just patrolling and, you know, kind of going around, interacting with the public on a daily basis, striking up that conversation on the um, chairlift with the random person you get seated next to. It's just both of them have great positives. Hey, 60 years ago this year, Holiday Valley opened, and today we're going to have a little champagne and cake up in the lodge, and I was kind of trying to figure out how that champagne thing worked out, and then um, Joe Probst told me that one of the trails there, one of the original trails is named Champagne. Is that, our, is that coincidence, or how does that work? Um, no, that was just one of the original um, trails that was here. It started off with um, kind of the Edelweiss, Yodler, and Champagne areas. Um, actually, where they're going to be holding it in the Yodler Lodge, it's right next to the champagne um, sun deck so champagne is a is a, a, a good name um, in this area but I think they're they're kind of using that towards the 60 years I don't know if we're actually in wine country but Western New York is wine territory we may not be right but you can get some good fine champagne maybe not good quality French champagne but who cares we're drinking champagne absolutely absolutely yeah we're, we're in the heart of wine country um, the Chautauqua region is not too far away about 45 minutes to an hour drive um, very well known for their wine country we actually have a winery right in the little town of Ellicottville that does their own wine right here on site hey that's great again you guys got to make it up here to Holiday Valley and Ellicottville and Holiday Valley um, they tell me that it was often referred to as the Aspen of the East. And then I heard that Aspen is considered the Ellicottville of the West. Is that right? Of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Kristen, um, just if you had some advice to throw out there to somebody who's like, you know what, I think I could do that. I think I could come here. Kristen would be great to teach me how to be a ski patroller. What advice would you have if you throw it out there to somebody who's like, teetering on the edge should I do it shouldn't I do it is it too much time can I make it work how do you make it work you you have to be dedicated obviously there's a lot of time commitment that's involved but what we do here is we we love to have people come shadow come see what we do ski with us for the day understand what we do see the passion that we have and it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun as long as you like helping people that's that's really all that matters if you like to ski just come out and join us that's the key word is having fun the national ski patrol it's a business here and we do some things that aren't fun all the time but after we take care of the injured and the sick we go and have fun we try to push that aside and have a whole bunch of fun hey again i have fun driving up and down the east coast flying out to colorado they want me to go out to utah next we're having a ton of fun here with meet the members of the national ski patrol hey inside today i'll admit it I'm cold, and I stayed inside here for this interview with Kristen Russo. Again, meet the members of the National Ski Patrol coming to a mountain near you. Look us up every Tuesday and Thursday on YouTube and social media everywhere. Again, jump on the bandwagon, and don't be late.